So you've got your website design and now it's time to turn it into a full live responsive website. How do you do this? This is what we're going to cover on today's video. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Ron Segal. Welcome back to our free web design course. If you're new here on Flux, we talk everything web design and freelance design. So make sure you're subscribed and hitting that bell notification. We have videos coming up three days a week. And as I've mentioned in the intro today, we're going to talk about, we've been talking about how to design websites. Today, we're going to talk about the development side. So how do you go about and actually develop those websites? So I want to cover all of your options. And obviously, there's no perfect solution. So we're going to talk about pros and cons and how to think about the choices that you have. Let's dive into it. So as far as I can see, it, there's kind of a spectrum of options. On the one hand, you can just code the websites, right? So each either you as a designer, you learn how to code, you learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all these frameworks, and you actually code the website yourself. Obviously, that's an option and it will give you the ultimate customization because you'll be able to do anything you want. On the other side of the spectrum, we have tools. Um, the most famous ones of these are Wix and Squarespace. These tools have basically abstracted the whole coding um, aspect of things. So they actually do the coding for you and they've turned coding into just ready-made components. So there's no learning necessary. You basically just throw in ready-made components. You can customize them with basically the, you know, the parameters that they've enabled you to do. And then you can basically build the website yourself. Now, I should say that these tools were actually not built with designers in mind. They were actually designed with clients in mind. So the client will be able to do these things themselves without hiring you as a designer. And so these tools are kind of like tools for dummies and they include a lot of templates and a lot of ready-made elements to make clients life very simple when they're doing things themselves. Now, this is the most easy options you have um, if you want to do things yourself because almost there's almost no learning required to do them. However, because everything has been so obstructed and templated and, and turned into um, you know, components, the, your ability to create custom work, to actually visualize what you want in terms of the design, you know, the, the exact look and feel, the exact interactions and, and mobile responsiveness and how everything looks and behaves is limited. And so a lot of times the end result is not going to be what you want it to be. It's just what these platforms enables you to do, which is a lot of time very, very limited, especially if you want to move into kind of higher level premium web design where your work is really custom and you're selling it for more money. You can't rely on these platforms because they are template based. So then we have kind of the middle options, which the middle options, I call them UI for code, which basically means that you're almost coding the website yourself but instead of actually writing code you know the, the a ui for code has been created so you have actually an interface to manipulate the code but basically you're almost coding up the website yourself and here we have a spectrum as well so the the option that i want to start with is webflow so webflow and it's my tool of choice and I talk about this all the time so a lot of people know this is my favorite choice this is almost like coding yourself you can almost do anything you want and you can with code but they've really created a wonderful interface for you to without having to type up all these code or even learn the syntax and all with the meaning of all these things um, you can literally do almost anything that you want so this is a very very powerful tool and allows you as a designer to visually develop your website yourself without having to either learn how to code or hire a developer or relying on templates and ready-made components. However, because this is very, in terms of the, the, the mental models required to build, it's almost like coding. There is a learning required here. There is a kind of a, a, a steeper learning curve rather versus, you know, Wix or Squarespace because you really need to learn how to think like a developer. So while you won't be typing code, you need to learn how to think like them so that you can achieve whatever you want. So this is a very powerful tool, as I said, and it's not a secret. This is my uh, kind of my, my personal favorite tool of choice, but I do want to cover other alternatives here. So another one which is very popular is called Elementor. Now Elementor is basically a, a tool, a plugin that sits on top of WordPress and we're going to cover 
what is WordPress and, and talk a little bit uh, about content management system in a minute. But basically, it's a tool that sits on top of um, WordPress and allows you to almost like Webflow customized and build pages on top of um, on top of WordPress. Now, it's I don't think it's as powerful as Webflow is, but it is quite powerful and people have been uh, able to build quite custom and beautiful looking websites on top of WordPress using Elementor. So this is another option. Now, a new kind of tool, which is kind of in the middle is Editor X, which is a new tool from Wix, which is instead of being oriented at dummy clients is was built for designers and I think they basically said let's do a Webflow competitor. Now if this is a new tool um, and again it's somewhere in the middle so it's not as powerful as Webflow but it's it's also not as dummy as you know the old Wix um, Wix editor. I, I just did like a couple of days ago a video comparing uh, editor X with Webflow so you if you want to dive into this you can check that video to really see the difference between the platforms. Um, so those are kind of the tools and you can think about the right tool for you based on how much custom work and high quality website um, and customization you want and need and how much you're willing to you know, spend in the learning curve of learning how to use these tools. So the, the ones on the left are going to be the easiest one. The ones on the right are going to be a little bit more uh, difficult. However, they will enable you more customizations. Now, these are the tools that al allows you to take your design from you know from sketch xd whatever your tool of choice is and turn it into a live fully responsive web design however the next question that you need to think about is where is this website is going to be hosted and how my clients or whoever is going to be owning this website is going to manage the content because your clients are probably not going to be able or want to learn any one of these tools if they just want to create a new blog post or change the title of the website and that's why we have what's called content management system in short CMS and basically those are platforms that enable clients not not touch the the actual design of the website but just replace the content now here are the three basic ones that I want to cover on this video of course there's many more but I think these are the ones that are worth talking about and, and let's cover the differences so on the left we have WordPress WordPress is the most popular CMS in the world I think it powers up to I don't know the, the exact stat, like 80% of the websites in the world are hosted on WordPress. And the reason is that this is an open source CMS, which basically means you can use it for free. You download the software, you install it on a hosting service of your choice. And then you, and because this is open source, um, there's a huge, huge, huge variety of plugins and additions that you can um, install on top of it that can be very useful things like Elementor which allows you to build the page but things like um, you know plugins for C C uh, SEO plugins for e-commerce or basically plugins for everything so this is a very very broad kind of ecosystem which is again free not all plugins are free Elementor for example is a paid plugin but in general the CMS itself is free and it's very very popular the downside of this is that because this is open source and because this is kind of a legacy project that has been for like a, for for a long time on the internet it's kind of it's it's slow it's bloated it's not you know it's not it's not as safe as other alternatives because because again it's a big bloated open source project um the the other th one that i want to cover is webflow so webflow i i kind of when i compare you know wordpress and uh, webflow I usually use the metaphor of you know iOS versus Android where Android is kind of open source and 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 big well while iOS um, is kind of is a closed garden but they make sure that the user experience there and everything there just works and works super well so webflow you can host your website with webflow and use their native CMS which is like super 
It's very secure. It's a great user experience for the clients to update the website. It's everything just works there. The, the SEO and all the other tools are you know, in, in the box. You don't have to install plugins. You don't have to maintain plugins. You don't have to worry that your site is going to fall down because one plugin broke, which is something that happens all the time with WordPress website. So this is a more kind of closed garden, um, but everything there is kind of like top notch. The third one is Wix which again is kind of um, because it's for dummies it's the the web design and the CMS are all hosted for the clients on the same platform the thing about Wix is that while it's you know it's not open source as um, as WordPress it's still they do have an app store with kind of a big ecosystem of apps that you can install on your website um, which allows you for you know and even as a company because they are a big company they've already built in a lot of components and, and services that you can add to your website which sometimes you might find um, very very useful and you know ov obviously this platform was built for clients so they have a big focus on the CMS. So that's kind of an overview. Now, what what is the right one for you? As I said, I'm I'm not I don't know if I'm biased, but my pre perf personal preference at the moment for the website that I'm building for clients is Webflow because it allows me the best customization and user experience for my clients. But every client is different and I also had experiences in the past where clients were kind of sold on WordPress and I had to export the site that I've built on Webflow and then host it on WordPress, which is also a possibility. Um, so you need to really understand what are your goals, how are you working as a web designer, and what are your clients' goals, um, what would be a good fit for them. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments what your favorite platform is, what your favorite CMS is, and how do you think about this, and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.